would you listen to me? I can't help listening to you. I don't want to be sitting with my hands over my ears when Mr. Dunbar comes in. I was only trying to tell you I can't cope with any serious relationships yet. I, probably I never will. Now, oh, what's the use? You'll only hear what you want to hear. I heard you call me an emotional cripple. Do you think I wanted to hear that? I never meant to say that. I was trying to tell you that I was. But I still need friendship very badly, especially your friendship. I thought I acted as a friend to you. Really, I did. Or maybe I was just kidding myself. All right, Ken. I'm sorry. Friend? Oh. I've been so wrapped up in my own problems, I suppose I've been selfish and a bit unfair. What problems? Your mother? Acting up again? I think so. She keeps telling me how ill she is and asking me to give up my job and stay at home. Well, you wouldn't do that, would you? Well, if I didn't need this job to support her, I think I would. Well, you'd be daft if you did. Well, suppose anything were to happen to her while she's alone in that house. Nothing's going to happen to her. She's just going to lie there enjoying bad health as she's always done. Seems different this time. More convincing. A lot more convincing. Practice. Makes perfection, you see. Oh, come on. She's always been a hypochondriac. You know that. And surely you've learned to deal with a complaint. I've learned one thing about myself, Ken. What's that? That I'm just like you. I can only cope with one emotional cripple at a time. Very much the lady of leisure. I thought you'd be down at the Aqua Sports office by now. Yeah, I've got one or two things to attend to today. I have to go to a clown later on. Got them to be offered afterwards if I've time. I see you're dressed for the great outdoors. I thought you were going to Edinburgh shopping. I changed my mind. I have to go to Glasgow later in the week anyway. Glasgow? My trustees want to talk to me. There's so much to do around the estate. Now that Herr Meyer has made the terms on which we'll survive quite clear, I need to get on with my job. Lady Laird. Oh. Oh, well, I suppose it's a job you were raised to do. I wasn't raised to run the estate. I was taught the graceful parts of the job. It was assumed that the men would get on with running the practical side of things. They were so good at it, the estate had to be sold. Oh, well, that spilt milk. Too late to cry over it now. I have to learn and learn fast. Or there might not be an estate at all. I don't really think it could come to that, do you? Very easily. I don't think Klaus Meyer will leave it intact unless it goes a long way towards paying its way. I thought he liked it. I rather think he does. And he's well disposed towards the estate. But he's in business to make money, not lose it. Well, when you mean business, you usually get what you want. And you look as though you mean business now. And how do I look when I mean business? You wear wellies and a sweater like that one. <laughs> I wish it were that easy. Oh, I take it you won't be using your car later on. Look, don't let the wellies fool you. I'll only be walking when I have to. What's wrong with your own car now? Oh, I don't know. It's been a bit ropey lately. I think it's terminal. Well, if it's very important, I might be... No. No, it isn't. I uh, just wanted to go to town for some shopping, that's all. All right. Bye. Come on. Here we are. It's the matter with you, Jemima. You haven't been in here for ages. You're getting fat and fat. What's wrong with you? Dougal, mm -hmm. I think you are right to let we Donald go with us. 
I'm sorry things have to be this way. In what other way could they be, with my mother ill and me busy day and night? Well, I don't know of any. I wish there was. No one should ever have to make a decision like the one you've had to make. It was very brave of you. Brave? There's nothing brave about doing the only thing left for you to do. My mother would have killed herself trying to look after wee Donald. You know what she's like. I wish I'd had more time to be with the boy before. But I hadn't then, and I haven't now. He'll be fine with you. And maybe I'll see more of him if I have to come up to your place to see him. Yes, and I'll be bringing him down here when I come to do the heavy work for your mother. You will be good to your mother, won't you, Tucker? Good to her? I'm always good to her, am I not? Yes, of course you are. Then why did you say a daft thing like that? She's uh, very upset just now. Aye, of course she is. With everything to be got ready for your wedding and the thought that you'll be taking Donald with you when you go. She blames herself for that. Eh? For you losing Donald. How can she? It was me that decided, not her. She thinks if she hadn't fallen ill, you could have kept him here. She's right. We could. But it's not her fault that she was ill. Well, that's not the way she sees it, Dougal. <sighs> Women. I'll be good to her, never you fear. Did Hermia give you any idea when his whiz kid is likely to join us? But he'll be here as soon as he's free of present commitments. <laughs> Which tells us precisely nothing. Be wrong of us to think of him as just her Myers whiz kid. Did you know it was Lord Strathmorris who suggested him? He's Strathmorris's man, is he? <laughs> what difference does it make anyway? It makes a considerable difference. Her Myers man might be quite interested in the efficiency of the estate. Strathmorris's will be more interested in its inefficiencies. <laughs> well, whoever he is, if he tries to trespass on my ground, he'll be ordered off. But if he won't stay off? He'll have to. Oh, I'll have to reconsider my position here very carefully. Oh, come on. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to go. But as Hermia pointed out, I'm expendable. Look, he knows that it's my function to hire and fire at certain levels on the estate. Of course, I can't stop you from resigning if ever you want to. That eventuality is fairly remote. If this efficiency expert behaves himself, can minimize the chances of him misbehaving if we look at every single thing that he might consider important and have our answers ready and our proposals for any improvements in the running of the estate. That's exactly what I'm doing now and this is where the answers lie, Mrs. Cunningham. In old records. You can't design the future of an agricultural area unless you have a very thorough knowledge of its past performance. Of course. Everything we deal with here on the estate is a crop, not just the grain but the milk calves, the lambs, the fish, even the trees. You take one end and I'll take the other. We'll lift it over your mouth. We will do nothing of the kind. Wouldn't it be easier for you to reverse that? Maybe it would and maybe it wouldn't. But I have been driving my bus up and down this road for over 30 years and I have never backed up for anyone yet. Ah, ah, then you have a new experience coming to your mouth. Have I? Don't you think your passengers will get annoyed if you keep them waiting all day? If the worst comes to the worst, Jen man, my passengers can always get out and walk to Glendarrow. Can the stuff you're carrying walk to Laird's Point?
Elizabeth. I fairly Mother Hubbard him. You should have seen the look in his face when he had to get back into his lorry and reverse all the way back. <laughs> and would you really have made your passengers walk if he hadn't reversed? They would have been glad to. Every single one of them was right behind me. And no wonder. They've had nothing but trouble from the folk up at Lear's Point ever since that project started. And as for me, I feel they're putting those big lorries deliberately on the road to ruin my schedule and make me run late. No, it's hardly the first time you've run late, Maggie. You haven't always at Laird's Point to blame for it. Well, maybe once or twice I've slowed down to stop my engine from boiling over, but that was in the interest of public safety. And I have been known to stop for a wee while to let the folk look at the scenery. Well, that was called providing a service, but this is sabotage. Oh, that's right enough, you know, Maggie. You think the government had more to do than persecute you like that? Well, one good thing. I don't think they'll mess about with Maggie Ferguson again. Trust you to strike a blow for Glendarek, Maggie. Mind you, I didn't come out of it entirely scot-free. Uh, they held me up for so long, I won't have time now to go home and make myself a bit of lunch. Well, well, that's easily remedied. You can stay and have your lunch with me. Isabel, <laughs> are you sure you've got enough for the both of us? You know, driving a bus burns up your energy, gives you a healthy appetite. Oh, okay. I'm not eating much myself these days. I always seem to make a lot more than I can use. Of course, I'd forgotten how much things have changed up here. You'll be all on your own at lunchtime, eh? What with Jimmy at the Aquasports and Brian at the sawmill. Be all in your own most of the day. Oh, well, I'll get used to it in time. Oh, of course you will. You can get used to anything in time. But, oh, it's not much of a life for you, is it? You know, it's funny how there are times in your life when people seem to want you. Then, all of a sudden, they don't seem to need you anymore. You know, some people in your position would start to brood about it. any help? No, but the car does. <laughs> that seems to be the trouble. Oh, pneumonia, I think. It just coughed and then died on me. Well, you're lucky it's one of the days I make the deliveries for Blair's store. I didn't know you did that. Well, somebody has to make them. Ever since you persuaded Jimmy to be a water baby. Never thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Today's just dead considerate. Well, we'd better get moved out of the way quickly. Maggie Ferguson's due soon. There's plenty of room for us to pass. Oh, sure there is. But uh, she might just take it into her head to bulldoze you out the way anyway. <laughs> Why? Because you're there. <laughs> this car hasn't been serviced for a while, has it? Oh, ages. I haven't been able to do without it for a single day. Oh, you better bring it to me soon. You may have to do without it for good. You know, it's a false economy to run a car as long without a service. Especially as you get the servicing free. Here she comes. doing there? What do you think we're doing, a tangle? Isn't it bad enough with hundreds of lorries from Laird's Point blocking the road without you starting as well? The road isn't blocked. Look, there's plenty of room to get round if you try. I'll guide you if you like. You'll do nothing of the sort. I can manage quite well myself. This wouldn't happen if people took better care of their vehicles. Factory? Oh, I'm afraid he isn't. Uh, I don't think he'll be back tonight. 
Is it anything urgent? Oh, nothing that can't wait. But it's not a social call. I didn't think it was likely to be. <laughs> Are you finished with a knife? Something attempted, something done, has earned a night's repose, as our old school teacher used to say. Well, it's also earned you a lift home, if you can use one. Oh, no thanks, sir. But it was nice of you to offer. Well, good night, then. I'll see you around. Good night, Mr. Blair. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Oh, he's a moody character, that one. One minute he's all pally, the next he won't even pass the time of day with you. Oh, he's always been perfectly civil to me. You've never had all that much to do with him, have you? Oh, I've never met him socially, if that's what you mean. I've known him since he was a wee boy, seeing he was moody then. And he's moody now. Clever, mind you. Oh, I, Very... <sighs> moody. It wasn't everybody liked him then, you know. Still, things are different now. Now nobody likes him. He seems quite nice to me. That's because you're a woman. And you know what all the players are like with women. <laughs> are you home? Hmm, just in. What have you been buying? It's a present. A wedding present for my father. Oh. If you've bought him a present, does that mean you're going to the wedding? No. Oh, look, Mum, you don't understand. I had to buy him something. To show him I still love him. Although you still feel he shouldn't get married at all without your permission. Although I still feel betrayed. There's no reason why you should. I don't feel with my reason. I just feel things. What well, don't you feel as though I've betrayed you? By buying him a present. I'm glad you did. You haven't? I'm not sure that I should. Your position's entirely different. It's not so difficult to stop being a wife. It's not so easy to stop being a daughter. I wish you hadn't stopped being a wife. <laughs> In some ways, so do I. But if I hadn't, we wouldn't be here in Glendara. And that would be awful for you, wouldn't it? Yes. I'd be socialising in Edinburgh, <laughs> making big issues out of small talk, and I'd be bored out of my mind. You'd know why it's that. I'd only be half alive. What would you be doing if we were still in Edinburgh? <laughs> I'd probably be running around with the Edinburgh jet set. <laughs> and I'd be bored out of my mind. But at least we'd still be a family. Well, it's about time we were getting up to the Chateau Taylor if we want to make the most of the light. Chateau Taylor will be there when we're all gone. Tea will be ready in a minute. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Lachlan. I've already had something to eat. Oh, and what have you had to eat? A sandwich. Oh, that'll nourish you. <laughs> well, stay and eat, or stay and not eat. You please yourself. But I'm not having Alice go without her tea. She's had a full day's work here, you know, at the Chateau Lachlan. <laughs> and if she's going to insist on overtaxing herself, then she's not going to do it in an empty stomach. Not if I have anything to say in the matter. Yeah, that's you told, Bob Taylor. Oh, good. <laughs> it makes me feel like one of the family when Mrs. Lachlan tells me off like that. Oh, but you are one of the family, isn't he? <laughs> He's the cheeky one. <laughs> well, if the other cheeky member of the family is going with us, I'd better go and get him ready. Oh, you better leave Donald be for this once. I mean, you have to have some time on your own. Oh. We'll have plenty of time on our own once we're married. Hey, but Donald will just get in the way when you're trying to get on with your work. No, he won't. Well, he will really. But it helps us to stop every so often. Well, it gives you an excuse to stop more often <laughs> than not. 
Yes, but by the time you finish your tea, you'll be a wee bitty behind hand, and you'll not want anybody stopping you tonight. Do grab in soon, and we'll manage just fine, the pair of us. Well, I'll miss the monster tonight. That's no way to talk about the child. <laughs> you wouldn't say that if you could see him trying to climb the ladder or eat the paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob's very fond of wee Donald for all that. Uh, of course I am. Uh, it's great being an uncle. You have all the fun of being a parent, but you don't get any of the hassle. I was talking to Maggie Ferguson today. Well, that must have been a lot of fun for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are things up at the Aquasports now? Not bad. With a letter today from that guy who uh, had the accident on the loch. Apologising for the fussy mate, huh? No. It was from his lawyers, actually. They were accusing us of negligence, incompetence, well, everything in the book short of attempted murder. Mm. They suggested we might discuss compensation with them. I should just tear the letter up and forget it. What's the point? They'll only send us another one. Oh, that's right. And every time they write a letter, it'll cost their clients more. At the end of the day, he'll be sorry he even started. Oh, well, that's assuming we don't have to pay the costs in the end. Well, it's his fault. There's no way he can win. Dad, I know at least one witness who's going to take his side. Uh, his girlfriend? Mm. Ah, she doesn't count. She's not the only one who doesn't count, is she? Why do you never ask what kind of day I've had? I don't suppose either of you cares. I just don't seem to matter to you anymore. Oh.